Hey guys and welcome back to our series on Orlando vacation planning. Today we're talking about everything you need to know about airport transfers. Now when you get to Orlando you've got to have some way of getting from the airport to your hotel. You could take a cab, you could rent a car, you could pay for a shuttle service, or you could really go in style and hire a private limo and driver. Now there is a no-cost way to do this. If you're staying at one of Disney's 28 resorts or hotels, you can use Disney's Magical Express. This is a complimentary motor coach service that'll take you and your bags to the hotel. When you use this service, you don't even have to mess with baggage claim at the airport. Your bags are delivered straight to your room, so long as you arrive at the airport between 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. Now it can take up to three hours for your bags to arrive in your hotel room, so make sure that any medications or anything you need immediately is in your carry-on luggage. You can reserve this service when you book your hotel room or by calling Disney directly at 407-939-1936. We'll have a link up to this service as well as all of the other transfer methods we talk about over on our blog at onevacationgetaway.blogspot.com. You can also get to the blog by clicking the About section down below the video and you can go straight over there from there. Now if you decide to take a taxi from the airport, you're looking at about $45 to $50 each way from MCO, Orlando International, over to the International Drive Hotels. It's going to be more than that if you want to go to Disney. If you have a party of three or four, you might have some luggage space issues though using one cab. Now another option is shuttle bus services. These are usually going to cost you between $20 and $25 per person each way. A shuttle bus will get you there, but it's going to do it with a few downsides. After a long flight, you'll go claim your bags and baggage claim, and then you'll wait by the curb until the shuttle bus has enough families to really fill it up, and they'll pack you in and send you on your way. Think can of sardines. Also, you won't be able to stop off at a grocery store to pick up drinks and snacks, milk and cereal for the room. Most Orlando hotels have a refrigerator in the room, and so this stuff is very handy during a long trip. And you're going to be making multiple stops at other people's hotels. You're going to wait on the driver to pull their luggage out, to get them out, wait on his tip, maybe load some people up to go back to the airport when he gets done also. We actually used this method on our first trip to Orlando using the shuttle bus service, and as luck would have it, ours was the last stop. We've actually found a better alternative to the shuttle services. If you have a party of three or more, hiring a private limo company like Orlando's Happy Limo can make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't have to be a limo either. They rent town cars, they have Suburbans, and of course they do have the limos, including the Stretch Hummer. All right, so let's run the numbers. Now follow me here, okay? Let's say you've got a party of three. If you take a shuttle bus, you're looking at paying about $75 each way, just to a hotel on International Drive, and so that'd be $150 round trip. For about the same amount of money, you can hire a private driver and have him waiting on you at the airport when you get there with your bags. Luxury sedans like town cars will run about $68 each way, $125 round trip, and that's the International Drive or Disney. They charge a flat rate over at Happy Limo. Suburbans, which can take up to six people, $93 bucks one way, it's $166 round trip. This is much cheaper than a shuttle. Think about it. If you had six people in a shuttle, that's almost $300 round trip, but it's a flat rate with the limo company, so there you go. And the limos can haul up to eight people. If you're having a big family outing to Orlando, that's $123 bucks one way or $227 round trip. At $20 bucks a pop for a shuttle, that'd be $161 one way. You can save money and really go in style using a limousine. Best of all, Happy Limo will actually make a 15-minute grocery stop outside the tourist trap areas where it's more expensive just so you can get milk and drinks and cereal and things like that for the room. Let me tell you something, you could easily save up to $30 a day just by having breakfast in your room in the mornings. That adds up to a huge ton of money over the course of a long trip in Orlando. Did I mention they'll also have cold beverages waiting on you in the vehicle? Now after the grocery stop, they'll take you and your family directly to your hotel. And at the end of the trip, they'll pick you up and make sure you get back to the airport on time for your flight. We found really good service and excellent value going the private limo route when it comes to our trips to Orlando. And it really adds that something extra special to the trip. The kids love it. 
Now the other alternative is renting a car. A lot of people use this option. If you're a really young family though, it can be difficult finding a place that'll rent to you. Over on the blog, we've got a link up to Fox Rental Car Company there in Orlando. They will actually rent to people as young as 20. You'll also find links up to rental car comparison sites so that you can do some shopping around and find the best price. Now rental cars can be a viable option, but there are some expenses you need to consider. You're going to have to pay for fuel. If it gets scratched or dented, you're on the hook. There are tons of toll booths in Orlando and red light cameras, and they like making money that way. And here is the biggie. The theme parks are going to charge $15 to $17 to $18 a day to park. If you're staying in Orlando for 7 to 10 days or longer, that is a lot of money getting burned up just in parking fees. And then on top of that, you have to walk and walk and walk till you get to the front of the park. And the parks are huge. You're going to do a lot of walking in the parks anyway. The better alternative for us has been to simply use a taxi service. They have Yellow Cab and Checker Cab, which are both owned by Mears Transportation of Orlando. For your research convenience over on the blog, we have a link up to a taxi fare estimator. With the estimator, you're going to be able to find specific fares from your hotel to particular parks and attractions. We also have the phone number for Yellow and Checker Cab up on the site so that you can stick it in your cell phone, and that is very handy. If you have bigger parties, they will actually send you a van, and it's the same thing as far as the taxi fare goes. It goes by the mile. Now, taxi trip out to the Disney parks from the iDrive area are going to cost you a bit more. They're around $45 each way, depending on the park. We realized the fare was worth it, though, on our first trip to Orlando after we paid $20 each for a bus service that would take us from our iDrive hotel to Disney and back. It was a nightmare. I think we stopped at every hotel and park before we actually got to Epcot, which is where we were going for it, and we didn't get to the park until like 11.30 in the morning. The hotel's pay bus service was even worse at the end of the day. After the fireworks at Epcot, it took us about two hours to get back to the hotel because once again, they loaded us onto a bad bus, they had to take us off of it, they had to get us a new bus, and then we start, stopped at every park and hotel on the way back. For us, time on vacation is a precious commodity, and we really don't want to spend large chunks of it waiting on a bus. So when we go to Orlando, we use Happy Limo for our airport transfers, and we tend to use taxis to get around town. It just makes the trip stress-free, relaxing, and it maximizes our time. For us, at least, these are two elements that are definitely worth budgeting for. Well, there you have it. All the basics on airport transfers and getting around to Orlando. If nothing else, put that local taxi number on our blog into your cell phone just in case you need it. I know it's come in handy for us many times when we wanted to get picked up from a restaurant or from an attraction along International Drive. And we didn't want to wait for the local trolley and couldn't find a, a cab whizzing by. Well, folks, we hope you found this helpful and it makes your Orlando getaway just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching and happy travels. Hey, if you'd like to see some of our past getaways and share yours, check us out on Facebook at YouTube Getaway. We've also got this episode and a whole lot more over at our blog, onevacationgetaway.blogspot.com. Hey. If you found this video helpful, we hope you'll share it and let us know down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.